The Big Story. All right. What is it? Nothing. I I just think you ought to rest. What and... is it? It isn't anything. You just have to take care of yourself. Stop and... saying that. Stop saying that and not looking at me and lying to me. I'm not lying. Then what's the matter? Stan, what is it? What's the matter? <laughs> The Big Story. The story you're about to hear actually happened. It happened in Chicago, Illinois. It's authentic and is offered as a tribute to the men and women of the great American newspapers. From the pages of the Chicago Sun-Times, the story of a search that saved a life. Chicago, Illinois. The story as it actually happened, Virginia Marmaduke and Joseph Cardick's story as they lived it. Hot. Sweltering hot in the stuffy courtroom. Sit there, Joe Kordick, with your head back and your camera beside you, and watch the angry buzzing of a fly against the dust-flecked window pane. Sit there, Virginia Marmaduke, pencil in hand, listening to the aimless drone of the court clerk's voice, calling out names. Names in divorce actions, and the cases themselves, the dry, matter-of-fact charges, the unemotional statements... That are the obituaries to a marriage. And then suddenly you hear... Don't keep asking me that. Don't keep asking me if I'm sure I want a divorce. I have to have one, don't you see? If I don't have one, my husband... He'll let them kill my child. Joe, did you hear what I heard? I sure did. Grab your camera. This one's a story for us in spades. It isn't a story. is isn't anything to talk about. Just leave me alone, please. We heard what you said in court, Mrs. Bigley. That sounded like a story to us. Just what did you mean your husband was going to let them kill your child? Who did you mean by them? I know you want news. I know it's your business, but get it someplace else, please. <sighs> Look, we're not vultures, Mrs. Bigley. The story isn't everything. We don't just want to torture you for a front page spread. Maybe we can help. Tell us, please. Okay. Listen to her, Virginia Marmaduke. Put your pencil away and listen. This isn't one of those stories where you have to make notes. Listen, Joe Cordick. The pictures can come later. This isn't a story for posed shots. Just listen. I suppose a lot of marriages go sour. Like with Dan and me, that's not news. But this one was good once. We were like any two people in love. That you, honey? No one else but. Who were you expecting? Just my husband. Hi, husband. Hi. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> okay, what is it? <laughs> what do you mean, what is it? That look. Come on, come on, give. <laughs> Darn you. I had it all planned. <laughs> what? Oh, how I was going to tell you. After supper on the porch with just candlelight. Now, what are you going to tell me that requires candlelight? I didn't say it required it. I just think it's nice for a girl to have candlelight when she tells her husband they're going to have a baby. Well, I don't see why. You know what you just said. Yes, I know. Us, Carol? A baby? Well, darling, you don't have to look so startled. Well... Aren't you glad? Glad? Well, that's no word for it. I... Well, Carol... Well, honey, don't look like that. I'm fine. You're wonderful. He made me feel wonderful, too. 
We were so proud, so happy. The baby was born, a little girl. I could hardly wait to see Stan, to talk to him. Did you see her? Did you see our little girl? Carol, Carol, honey, why don't you I rest? Said, did you see her? Did you see our baby? Well, no, I, um... You didn't. Look, Carol, please, dear. All right. What is it? Well, it's nothing. I I just think you ought to get what some rest. What is it? It isn't anything, Carol. You just have to take care of yourself. Now, stop saying that. Stop saying that and not looking at me and lying to me. I'm not lying. You're not telling me something. They didn't let me see the baby. They said she was asleep. Stan, did you see her? Carol. Well, what's the matter? Stan, what is it? What's the matter? <laughs> didn't tell me. But I found out. After three days of a living nightmare, I found out. A doctor told me. Mrs. Bigley, your husband thinks I better talk with you. Why can't I see my baby? Stan says everything is all right. He's lying, isn't he? You're all lying. I'm sorry. She's a very beautiful little girl, Mrs. Bigley. The trouble doesn't show. Well, what is it? An inverted bladder. What does that mean? It means you won't have your child very long, Mrs. Bigley. She can't live more than a few years. I don't think I knew even then what it would be like. Lynn, she was still just a new baby. You don't get really to love a baby until you hold it. Until you reach out your hand and his fingers curl around your finger and hang on to height. So tight you feel they'll never let go. <laughs> Mrs. Bigley, can I... After that happens, it doesn't matter what they say. They can talk all they want about abnormalities and three years to live and how you've got to resign yourself. They can talk and talk. But after that, it's yours. And you love it. And you can't give it up. Of course. It was when Lynn was about two and a half years old. Stan came home one night. I was getting Lynn ready for bed. Carol? Uh, in the bedroom, honey. Lynn, Daddy's home, dear. Daddy! Hi, honey. Carol, I have to talk to you. What is it? Put Lynn to bed first. Oh, what is it? I talked to a doctor today. I met him on the way to work. He sent me to the clinic. There's an operation that can cure Lynn's condition. Get into bed, Lindy. Honey, did you hear what I said? I heard. Well, then... Do you think I didn't take Lynn down to the clinic? Well, why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? That there was an operation where the chances were a thousand to one she wouldn't pull through? That's a chance. A chance for a normal life. Fine chance. A thousand to one. Isn't it worth it? Isn't anything worth it? Do you want her to go Be through... Be quiet. Not here. Not now. I told the doctor I'd call him. Oh, go ahead and call him. Call him and tell him to try his gambles on someone else's child. Carol. Get into bed, Lynn, darling. Daddy, I want to say my prayers. All right. Say them, dear. Daddy, listen, too. All right, Lynn. I'm listening. You too, Mommy. Start. Now I lay me. Now I lay me. Down to sleep. Down to sleep. I pray thee, Lord. I pray thee, Lord. My soul to keep. My soul to keep. If I... Come on, Mommy. I forget about you. If I should die... If I should die... Before I wake... Before I wake... I pray thee, Lord. I pray thee, Lord. My soul to take. My soul to take. Amen. Amen. That was fine. Good night. Good night, darling. Don't cry, honey. I never let them operate. There's so little time left. I want it all. I never let them kill her. I meant what I said, Miss Marmaduke. Mr. Cordy. I never will let Lynn have the operation. I can't take the risk. But, Mrs. Bigley, without it, you were told she'll die. At least she's alive now. 
Stan couldn't understand that. He didn't see how I had to hold on to her. We argued. We said things, ugly, hurting things. Living together got to be impossible. We filed for a divorce. Just when you need each other most. I don't need Stan. Do you still love him, Mrs. Baker? He wants to kill Lynn. Do you still love him? Leave me alone, please. Just leave me alone. It's inevitable now, Virginia Marmaduke and Joe Cordick, that you have to go on, follow this story, because it has you in its grip. The story of a dying marriage, the dying child. You go see the husband, Stan Bigley. Your wife still loves you, Mr. Bigley. It's easy to tell All her. right, and I love her. But it's past that now. That kind of love's not enough. Miss Marmaduke, if she loves Lynn, she ought to be decent enough to give her a chance to live. Maybe she's afraid, Mr. Bigley. All right, she's afraid. I'm afraid, too. Do you think I don't love Lynn? That's what she said. But I do. I've seen her grow up, too. I've dressed her. I've taken her for walks in the park. I've tried... I love her, too. Of course. What's the point of this? Two people like Carol and me, something like this to face, we ought to be able to face it together. Why don't you try it that way? I can't, Mr. Cordick. I can't go back unless she says Lynn can have that operation. I'm right. I know I'm right. I think you are, too, Mr. Bigley. Thank you. So we'll have to get Mrs. Bigley to agree to it. Right, Joe? That's how I see it. She won't. She never will. Give us a crack at it, huh, Mr. Bigley? But I tell you, you're worth a try. There's a marriage to save. And a child. That's worth a gamble any day. Big words, Virginia Marmaduke. What now, Joe Cordick? Where do you go from here? A story, of course. Write it. Pictures. Get them. And then letters pour in. Letters from readers to Carol Bigley saying, agree to the operation. Give your child a chance. Net result, nothing. Because these are letters from strangers. They're only words. But then... Virginia Marmaduke. Hello, Miss Marmaduke. I'm calling about that little girl, the one you wrote about. Yes. Well, it's the funniest thing. I showed it to my husband. And he said it was exactly the same. What? Well, the same trouble as little Patty. She had that operation. She's fine now, just fine. Y you mean you know a little girl that's fine now who had the same trouble? That's right. Well, where is she? The, the little girl you're talking about. Well, she moved a year or so ago. Where to? Well, I don't know where, but her name is Patty. Patty Newton. It seems to me they said something about moving to Morgan Park. <laughs> Ah, but Virginia, listen, if you don't know where to find the child... We can start looking in the Morgan Park section. House to house? It's worth it, isn't it? A child with the same trouble who recovered. Wouldn't that be an argument? Maybe that would be the one thing to convince Mrs. Bigley to agree to Lynn's operation. Well, sure, but we don't know anything but this child's name. It's, it's late at night, rotten driving. Morgan Park's jammed with houses. Look, Joe... Nothing but seeing another child who's been cured is going to convince this mother. Sure, but... The... And we won't find the child without looking. Sure, it's a wild goose chase. Sure, it's a rotten night. But if we find that child, maybe a marriage doesn't have to go smash. Maybe a little girl doesn't have to die. So I'm going. How about you? Right behind you, with my fingers crossed. This is Cy Harris returning you to your narrator and the big story of Virginia Marmaduke and Joseph Cordick as they lived it and wrote it. A summer storm rages. Bright fingers of lightning jab at the sky. At your car. But you don't notice them. Keep going up one street, down the next, asking the same question. 
The question that may save the life of a marriage. The life of a child. Do you know of a little girl living here named Patty? Patty Newton? The lightning highlights the faces, the puzzled looks, the blank looks. The looks that say, no, never heard of her. No. So you keep on. She's about two years old. The name's Newton. They just moved here a little while ago. Man and wife and a little girl. The child had been sick. She had an operation. The name is Newton. If you don't know yourself, is there anyone around who might? Anyone who keeps track of new residents in the neighborhood? The answer is no. Over and over. No. Oh. Guess we better call it quits, Joe. Sorry. Yeah, we've covered just about every house in the area. I said I was ready to give up. Hey, steady. I'm sorry. No point snapping at you. I'm just disappointed. Sure. It was our only lead, Joe. Nothing else is going to convince that mother to let Lynn have an operation. And because of it, we have to sit by and... (sighs) Give me a cigarette. Uh Uh-huh. All all out. I'll get some at the grocery store over there. It's still open. I'll go with you. Joe, sorry for the outburst. Ah, forget it. Well, good evening. And just in time, I was locking up. I won't keep you longer. Pack of pell-mell. Sure thing. You people are strangers around here, huh? Sure are. I can tell. I know just about every name and every face. It's good business. You don't happen to know a little girl named Patty Newton, do you? Well, I know a Newton family, 1400 block on South St. Louis. Nice woman. Does she have a little girl? Mm, I think so. Come on, Joe. Hey, hey, you got change coming to you. Keep it, and thanks a lot. For what? What'd I do? You never know. People. Yes? I'm sorry, I kept you waiting, but uh, I, I didn't... Expect... Excuse us for butting in this time of night. Are, are you Mrs. Newton? That's right. My name's Virginia Marmaduke, reporter for the Sun-Times. This is Mr. Cordick, a photographer. Hello. Uh, uh, come in. Mrs. Newton, do you have a daughter who once suffered from an inverted bladder? Yes. Oh, oh the woman in the paper. The one who won't let her daughter have the operation. That's right. Then you know about it. I've been reading every word of those stories, wanting so badly to talk to her and to tell her that she has to do it. But I I, I didn't want to butt in. You wouldn't be butting in. It's so terribly important. Would you talk to her any time you want? Now? At night? I just don't want to waste any time. All right. I I can wait, Patty. I'll call Mrs. Bigley. She's Lynn's mother right away. I'll see what she says. Maybe she won't want it now, Virginia. It's late. I know it's late, but... Somehow, I don't think it's too late. Not anymore. The meeting is arranged. A quick drive across town, and two sleepy-eyed children meet. Two mothers stand and watch. Come in my room, Patty. I have dolls. Joe and I will go in with him, Mrs. Bigley. You and Mrs. Newton can talk in here alone. They look cute together, don't they? Just about the same size and everything. Only Patty will grow up. And Lynn can too, Mrs. Bigley. Patty had the same trouble, exactly the same. Was it really the same? Exactly. And now she's completely cured. It's such a chance. They told me without the operation, Patty wouldn't live. How could you decide? I loved her. Do you think I don't love Lynn? Then give her a chance. I know how you feel, Mrs. Bigney. I'm the one person in the world who knows how you feel. But think how I feel now. Patty's well. She's whole. She has her whole life in front of her. I look at her now and I don't have to say, how long? How long? No, well, don't. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I'm so very sorry. <laughs> Miss Marmaduke. Yes? You call my husband, please. 
and tell him to come here and tell him I, I need him to, to help me take Lynn to the hospital. I came as fast as I could, Carol. Don't ever go away again. I never will. And whatever happens, we'll have each other the way it ought to be. The way it ought to be. You're at the hospital a week later, Joe Cordick and Virginia Marmaduke. You're there when they wheel the child down the corridor toward the operating room. You're there when the cart stops beside Carol and Stan Pigley. Where am I going, Mommy? Am I going to sleep? Yes, darling. For a while. Oh, Teddy Blair. Teddy's right beside you, sweetheart. He's, he's right here. Uh, goodbye, Mommy. Goodbye, darling. Will you wait for me to come back, Mommy? Mommy! Sure, baby. We'll wait for you to come back. The card is wheeled away. The wait begins. A long, long wait. The minutes crawl by, Virginia Marmaduke. Minutes in which you know this is more than a story now. This is something you can scarcely bear. More minutes. You look at your watch, Joe Kodak. Two hours. And then... Oh, the doctor's coming out now. Dan. All right, honey. Dan, I have to tell you now before he says anything, no matter what. You were right. She had to have the chance. No matter what happens, you were right. I'd never blame you. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Bigley. Yes? She's going to be just fine. Child in tonight's big story recovered completely from operation. When last visited by Uncle Joe and Aunt Virginia, as we are called, we found a roller skating and riding new bicycle. Also present were happy mother and father and brand new baby sister. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic big story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed with the exception of the newspaper reporter. The Big Story has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.